video, we're going to look at the idea of time series forecasting, both the univariate and the multivariate perspectives. So first, univariate time series analysis. Univariate means a single variable. So this means forecasting the value of a single attribute based on its own past history. So here you have a simple time series and the forecast variable or target variable is traffic volume, the amount of traffic on a highway at a certain point in time. Univariate time series analysis looks at the traffic at previous times to make an estimate or forecast or prediction of the traffic in future times. And that's a core idea. It doesn't look at anything else. It just looks at the fact that the other traffic volumes were at previous times. It tries to detect a trend, perhaps to detect um, a seasonality. Based on that, predicts future traffics, uh, traffic volumes. There are different approaches that can be used for univariate time series analysis. Uh, and some approaches might actually work on some data sets better than others. So there's not any one approach that is universally better in all cases. So some very good approaches that work well on a lot of different data sets include a simple exponential smoothing with seasonality. This is the classic approach, which still works fairly well. And various kinds of software have their own varieties of that. For example, Rapid Minor has a version that they call functional and seasonal component. Uh, so that uh, it takes this approach into uh, consideration. Then one of the best uh, approaches that has been used uh, for decades is the Holt Winters approach, which is also called exponential triple smoothing or ETS. And another very different approach is called ARIMA. Um, uh, which stands for auto regression with integration and moving averages. So these are different approaches. And this video does not get uh, at all into the mathematical details of how this works, uh, how any of these works. Uh, however, if you are interested, there is a link here uh, that does go through these and some other approaches and with very light mathematics, but more uh, intuitively explained how these different approaches address time series analysis. Uh, regardless, what each of the approaches is doing is represented in this video here. So there's some sort of window, which is the data set, sets or subset of the time series data that is being used for the analysis, whether uh, simple exp exponential smoothing, Holt Winters or Rima. And based on the pattern that is detected in that window, an estimate sometime in the future is made. Then the, these estimates keep on moving. So when another window is selected, an estimate a certain amount of time in the future is made. And then the window is shifted and then another estimate is made. And the, the analysis keeps on shifting the windows and making estimates. And generally speaking, that's how univariate time series analysis tries to make its estimations. Now, one uh, key issue is to realize that estimates, forecasts are never perfect. There's always going to be some level of error. And quantifying or at least having an idea of the amount of error to expect is a very important aspect of appropriate forecasting. So the forecast gives a specific number for each point in time, but there's always some level of error. So like here, um, the red is the actual data and the blue here, the thick blue line, is the forecast. So this is what is estimated based on looking at all this past data. But from here, this overlap conception is when you compare when the future data actually occurred, how it's compared with a forecast that was made at this initial point. And at first blush, uh, it looks uh, very much off, but there's some 
things that can be done to quantify the amount of error somewhat. Um, so first here, now it's helpful when the forecast gives error estimates, and that's indicated by the blue, the shaded blue regions. So the dark blue represents generally one standard deviation, which means that although the forecast made specific point predictions along the blue line, there's an, S, there's an expectation that the actual value will never be the exact estimated amount. It's uh, like in this period, it was only two points where it was the exact amount, but the shaded blue, the dark blue, indicates that the actual value will be expected to occur two thirds of the time and 68% of the time within this dark blue region. And from that perspective, okay, that's getting, uh, that's not so bad. And the light blue or grayish region is where 95% is expected. So with this dark blue line, it's saying that this is the average expected estimate over the, at each point of time, but the actual value will probably be two thirds of the time in the dark blue region and 95% of the time should be expected within uh, the light blue or gray region. And we find that that's pretty much uh, on target, that two thirds of the time or actually more than two thirds of the time, the actual red did fall within this dark blue and 95% of the time it did fall within the gray. But that is a very huge amount of variation. And you can see that the farther away uh, from the point of estimation right here, the wider these error estimates are. So meaning, although there are point estimates, there's a much wider uncertainty. And so in order to minimize uncertainty and have narrower error bars, you should not forecast too far in the future. When you do forecast far in the future, then you know your actual value might be way off, way higher or way lower. And estimates out here look pretty uh, wild, but if you understand that this is a rolling window, meaning that at this point in time, here are the estimates, but then when you have one month later, then you make new estimates and the closer estimates have a much narrower error bar. And then when you get to another period, you make new estimates. And with that, the estimates are not so bad. You have a, mar a margin of error. Uh, so the idea is that, but the farther in the future you predict, the wider your errors. Now the errors are not the end of the story because uh, much of the error, so that's the error is how far off the actual value is of the predicted, much of this error could be explained by other variables. Uh, and some of these other variables might be known. So if these are sales estimates and your actual values are a little bit off, well, some of that might be explained by how much advertising you did in that month, or it might have to do with how, many, how much sales your competitors have. And so if you have a way to consider other variables beyond just the one variable itself, then that could increase the accuracy of your estimates. And this is exactly what multivariate time series analysis uh, tries to do, which is uh, what we look at now. So in multivariate time series analysis, the predictors and the target labels each have their own parallel time series. So here's a small uh, example of a multivariate uh, time series. Again, the target is uh, the traffic volume, how much traffic there is on a highway at a certain point in time. But uh, in addition to looking at uh, the, the, the times, the sequential times and traffic, you look at the temperature, and this is in Kelvin, uh, at each point in time, you look at how much rain there was, uh, look at the cloud coverage and even the, uh, the main kind of weather at that time. These things might affect how much traffic there is, is at a certain point in time. And each of these has this parallel time series. 
So like the temperature is a time series, the temperature at one point is partially determined at the temperature of the hour before, the rain in one hour is partially determined by rain in the previous hours, and so on. So another example here is a, a simpler example, is in this time series here, you have a television advertising compared to the number of quotations or number amount of sales an insurance company makes. Uh, with the idea, hopefully, that the more they advertise on television, then the more calls uh, they get and the more uh, insurance quotations they make. And you can see here that when advertising amounts are up, then quotations go up. When advertising is down, quotations are down. You can see that they parallel each other very closely because there's uh, a relationship. Here's a more uh, generic uh, version of this, uh, where we see that in general, you're predicting the Y from not only its past time series experience, but also the values of some other X variable. And if you look at the peaks and the valleys, they do correspond, but not exactly. For example, when this one goes up here, the up comes a little bit after. When the X dives down here, the Y dives down a little bit after. X peaks here, well, the peak in Y comes a little bit after because there's some lag. In other words, X does not have an effect on Y, but it takes a little bit of time, maybe a few days, maybe sometimes a month or two, for the effect to be shown on Y. And so a key aspect of the, this kind of multivariate time series analysis is detecting how much is the lag, how long does it take for X to affect Y, so that you can accurately uh, detect this effect in your forecasting. Now, to treat problems like this, uh, where you have multiple variables in a data set, you're predicting one variable. Uh, you treat it just as a simple regression problem. That is, you have lots of uh, variables trying to predict another. Ignores the trends. It ignores the seasonality in the data that has been going on over time. And because of that, when you carry out multivariate time series analysis, instead of just regular regression analysis, uh, you can incorporate very valuable information that is more, more highly explanatory or predictive than if you ignore the time trends and seasonality that a multivariate time series analysis uh, incorporates. So there's various uh, methods that might be used for this. A lot of different uh, machine learning methods, uh, linear regression is a classic approach. In this case, has a special name, dynamic regression. It can be used for multivariate time series analysis, but decision trees can be used for it and other techniques as well that are used uh, for standard uh, regression analysis. So with this, hopefully you now understand what time series forecasting is fundamentally about and you understand the two uh, very important distinct approaches of univariate and multivariate time series analysis.